Hey friends. Well, let's consider this my first Mariv moment as opposed to Mincha. Um, I try to post on Tuesday afternoon a short inspirational teaching, um, some spirituality, hopefully to be supportive of your, uh, your practice. Um, but today it took until this evening, so we'll, we'll call it a Mariv offering, an evening offering. So this week uh, we read Parashat Noah. We read the part of Genesis that deals with the story of Noah. This is a story that is familiar not only to most Jews, but also non-Jews as well. Sort of one of those stories that we're often taught as young children. Um, and while it is a fun story about animals in an ark and Noah and his family, a story in many ways well suited to young people, um, it is also a story with tremendous spiritual depth and I think um, can be really relevant and compelling for us as adult um, seekers, people engaged in spiritual practice wherever we are in our adult lives. And so the Torah that I want to share is really one of my teachers, Torah, Rabbi Jordan Bandana Pell, who has such a beautiful understanding of Noah and the Ark um, that I feel really privileged to share with you this evening. So Jordan um, taught me that the Ark is in many ways actually a metaphor for our entire spiritual practice. It is in some sense that refuge that we are able to step onto, step into, um, to help us find some, some buoyancy, some safety, refuge um, in the midst of the inevitable storms that are a part of all of our lives. And there are a couple of key um, parts of this story details that I think can add an extra measure of relevance and, and really guidance to us on our spiritual practice. And the first is that we remember that the ark itself is not a motorboat. It doesn't have a rudder. It doesn't have a motor. It doesn't have a steering wheel. It is, um, it's a structure that floats. And we know that floating takes faith. We know that floating also requires that we soften our grip on um, the way we want things to be. And instead, um, we let go of that resistance. In fact, the word Noah in Hebrew is Noah, which comes from the word or is connected to the word Menucha, which means rest. And there too is incredible spiritual wisdom None of us can, can just cease unceasingly um, power through our lives. We have to rest, not only sleep, the kind of rest that comes for many of us at night, but also periods of rest amidst our day so that we can pause and recenter, refocus, regain perspective, and continue on. Another beautiful nuance is that the Torah describes that there was a tsohar. And the word tsohar is a unique word in the Torah. It actually doesn't appear anywhere else. So we don't know exactly what that means. But for generations upon generations, um, we have been taught that that tsohar was some kind of window. In uh, artistic depictions, you probably have seen the ark with a little circular window of some kind. And what I love um, about that detail is that it reminds us that though we may step onto the arc of our spiritual practice and we may feel ourselves to be alone, we never lose sight of the world around us. That our own spiritual seeking and pursuits and looking inward and um, moments of practice and connection are not separate from the suffering around us, the brokenness around us, the relationships that we're committed to. We always have um, 
a connection point through that Sohar to the world around us. Um, and I also want to suggest that the ARC can be uh, for us um, an experience of feeling safe, right? So the world doesn't feel so safe. Um, we need only look at the experience of COVID, although there are many other things that in our own individual ways um, make us feel less safe. And so it's so important that, of course, we learn how to soothe ourselves. And part of how we can do that is stepping onto our ark, whatever that means. But of course, we have to hear the invitation. And in this week's Torah portion, God says, Bo'ata, I'm inviting you in. And then we get to choose. Um, hopefully to build that ark, we build it with our practice. Um, and then it's there to sustain us. And finally, God says at the end of the parsha to Noah, you need to leave the ark. So we as Jews do not uh, sort of glorify lifelong monastic existence. Uh, even sort of lengthy retreats are somewhat suspect in our tradition. And I think there's an acknowledgement that, that we pursue our spirituality and our spiritual practice in service of bringing that wisdom and goodness and groundedness and connectivity um, to the world around us, which needs us. And we don't stay on the ark forever. Even Noah didn't stay on the ark forever. The dove came back for its journey and reminded Noah that there's dry land, there's a place to rebuild, there's a place to, um, to make things whole again. Noah had his issues. He, didn't, he wasn't perfect before the ark and after, um, but so too are we imperfect, trying really hard to do a good job. And our spiritual practice can help give us just enough rest and respite and safety and refuge so that we can go out and change the world. All right, everyone, wishing you a good evening. Shalom, peace.